In this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can use dynamic ad rules with Kitchen.io. So the goal is to show you how you can use any data source, calculate relative changes or any metric that you please and leverage dynamic lookups. And when we talk about dynamic lookups or dynamic ad rules, I'll explain what that means in a minute. Uh, but it's essentially our product uh, of Facebook ad rules or ad platform ad rules. And so you may ask why, why would you want to use rules in the first place? And if you haven't done that in the past, uh, you may not know that you can save a lot of time uh, managing uh, your campaigns compared to manually managing, uh, managing them. Um, you'll probably also be able to uh, increase overall ROI uh, or increase ad spend depending on what your goal is. Uh, and doing that all while not increasing workload or while not bringing on more people. So uh, what are examples of that? Uh, saving, saving money on underperforming creatives, so switching those off that are not performing. Scaling up well-performing campaigns, those ones that are you know, delivering the results that you want and that you want more of. Or just increasing, decreasing bids uh, to better hit your target KPIs. And one aspect of freeing up your time is also freeing up your mind and being able to focus on higher value tasks. So uh, usually in paid social, in our world, that means working on more strategic or creative tasks, especially uh, this year in 2023. So who is this for? Um, this is generally the Facebook ad rules are a product by Facebook and you can use them in your ad account at no cost. Um, this is more specifically for the dynamic ad rules for Kitchen. So uh, this is mostly relevant for agencies or multi-brand companies that want to make automated decisions across 10 or more accounts or 10 or more brands. Um, those ones that have very complex setups, so managing multiple markets, brands, products, etc. right? So maybe you're not managing a lot of different accounts, but you have one account that is extremely, uh, has an extremely complex structure. Any company that is not looking to just optimize towards Facebook data, but uh, or is not able to push data from somewhere else into Facebook to let Facebook optimize that for uh, for itself, um, you know, if you have first-party data that lives in your backend or a data warehouse, uh, or even if you have a third-party tool that manages your attribution that is not sending uh, data back to Facebook via the conversion API, you you know, this might be relevant to you. And then also, of course. If you don't want to, if you've already worked with a lot of rules, but you ended up maybe managing a lot of different rules, then this is also something to look at. Um, and we'll get into the details of, you know, the pros and cons of dip different types of tools or different types of approaches. Let's start with the beginning or, or the basics. Um, rules uh, are very simple, right? Rules are just conditions and actions. And we can go through some examples, right? Um, Let's start here. Um, for example, a rule would be if today's campaign spend is larger than $100, euros, pounds, send a Slack alert. Or if the ad set CPA is less than 50, increase bid by 10%. So we usually have on the condition side, we have a level or an object selection of some sort, right? So here we say this is the campaign, here it's an ad set. We have a time frame. Um, so in the first case, this is today. In the second case, it's not clearly uh, visible and then we have a metric um, so we've spent here and then CPA here and we then have a action an action right so this could be notifications status changes bid and budget decreases and increases or duplicating ad objects and those are the most familiar ones that you might be aware of so where are other tools lacking so you know, if we look at Facebook rules, uh, but also maybe some other tools that you're working with, Smartly, RevealBot, Magix, there are a lot of tools out there uh, that may help you to do that. And I'm not going to go into kind of a detailed comparison analysis, um, but I'll get into kind of what they do well and what, what maybe not. So for Facebook, we have a very clear, obvious problem. One is we have very limited object selection. That means we can usually not individually choose assets or campaigns that we want to apply a rule to. 
it is technically possible, but it's very tedious to do that. So you end up just managing a lot of rules and uh, or managing rules becomes up becomes you know your main task versus just managing the optimization itself uh, plus you only have facebook data um, you don't have relative metrics you don't have lookups so you can't pull in any other data sources and of course you have a set of actions that you can apply um, you know you can't just make up your own and so when it comes to other tools um, generally the data sources are better so oftentimes you can include google analytics sometimes you can include hyros data a third-party attribution service sometimes you can even include you know very limited spreadsheet data um, but usually you cannot do uh, complex lookups so you cannot just supply a spreadsheet or a data set that for example has your target metrics across your countries and all product categories etc and have one rule that manages uh, basically dynamically looks up what is the the correct value to apply here um, so it's very 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 simple um, usually we don't have relative changes so we cannot look at um, an ads 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 campaigns performance compared to its own performance in the past or maybe it's uh, a, a similar segment in the past or something like that and then we of course have a limited set of actions we can't just make up our own types of actions that we want to trigger uh, through these conditions um, so how how does it work on the kitchen side? Um, at kitchen, we uh, maybe, maybe we start with the data sources, right? So uh, generally, this is supported for the four main uh, paid social uh, platforms: so Meta, TikTok, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Uh, we can also do LinkedIn. Uh, we have worked with Google Ads before. Um, there is support for Apple search ads, etc. But I would say generally these are the four ones. Of course, we can include analytics and attribution providers, and there are two native integrations, Google Analytics and Hyros right now. Um, but we can also pull data from Shopify. We can pull data from pretty much any public API. We've used Mixpanel before, we've used AppsFlyer before. Uh, any service, and this would be a lot, any service that has a public API where you can generate an access token, um, we are able to include into this data set. Uh, this also includes custom backends or custom data sources, uh, databases, uh, whatever you might have. And then of course, you know, the good old Google spreadsheet and Excel online. So let's go into conditions and let's maybe dive one level deeper um, to just give you a little bit more context. And then I'll show you an example in a minute as well. So when it comes to uh, conditions, and we talked about these three different elements before, we have the level or object selection, we have time frame, and then we have metric. Uh, so what we can do with Kitchen is, uh, well, we can do any type of selection or any type of level. So we can look at uh, individual accounts, we can look at all accounts, we can look at individual campaigns uh, that you select, manually select, um, but we can also of course use dynamic uh, uh, dynamic filters uh, to do that. Uh, we can even group things up, for, so for example we could say look at the uh, ad set performance of all, you know, all ad sets where a specific ad exists or something like that, right? So basically make up your mind about what you might want to do. Uh, it's gonna be possible here. And there's no uh, limit to this. Uh, the way our platform works is that functionally um, it is uh, it supports pretty much anything because it is programmable, right? The, the platform is not a fixed solution that somebody came up with and that just has, you know, one way to to do something it is programmable it is a visual uh, programming interface um, you know there are a lot of different things that you can do uh, a lot of times our customers will end up building something that we had never thought of before uh, so when it comes to time frames yes of course um, we support all types of time frames right so uh, generally we talk about relative or absolute time frames this is i think most straightforward. Uh, so when we look at metrics, again, most straightforward use case here would be uh, spend, uh, sorry, absolute metrics, right? Spend, purchases, revenue, something that comes directly from the platform. But of course, we can go further. We can say calculated metrics, right? So this could be spend divided by purchases and, you know, uh, uh, calculated dynamically. This could be based on Google Analytics data or some other third party data where we look at the spend from Facebook, but then we combine the data maybe on campaign level or something like that and look up, well, how, uh, what was its effect in the real world in, in your business backend data? Um, and then I talked about this before, relative metrics, right? So uh, what is the CPA change yesterday versus the seven days before, right? Are we maybe dropping in performance um, 
not compared to some absolute value that you enter somewhere, but just uh, is there something maybe happening? Are we, you know, dropping performance 30%, 40% yesterday versus uh, the average of the last seven days? Or um, how are we doing to compare to a target? Um, so uh, what is the difference between the actual CPA over a specific time frame uh, versus the target CPA? And in this case, I want to show you the example of the dynamic lookup uh, because I think that's something that's super, super powerful and that allows you to actually set up a really consistent and powerful set of rules by actually just managing one rule. Um, but it really uh, allows you to... Um, to build something that is very, very, uh, very, very powerful. Uh, so I'm going to go into a very simple example. I'm just going to show it in this in these slides here um, for now, and then uh, we'll go through the actions that are possible, and then I'm going to jump over into an, uh, the actual use case, a spreadsheet and a kitchen automation. So in this case, what we're looking at right now is we're looking at a data set in the background. Uh, so this data set essentially holds ad set level data. So we're looking at ad set level data broken down by day. And you can see we have data for uh, seven days in December 2022. Uh, you can see we have a German uh, set of data and a US one. And we have two types of audiences for each. Uh, so you can see just here US interest, DS in uh, DE interest, uh, and a lookalike audience as well. And so we have all of this performance data over here. And so imagine this is your actual Facebook live data. Again, this could also just be a spreadsheet. Um, if you don't want to pull the Facebook data directly from the API, uh, any data so, uh, source will do. And so what we want to do now is we want to go through each of these ad sets and decide how well is it doing, right? H how well is an ad set doing? Should we be increasing bids, decreasing bids, increasing budgets, decreasing budgets, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And we know that our US account, generally, we um, have a target CPA of 85. And in the German one, we have a target CPA of 75. And that is because the average order values of the US account are usually a little bit bigger. So we're willing to spend a little bit more money. This could, of course, also be a different that our account maybe is run in US dollars and the German one is run in euros. So uh, maybe that's actually just the only reason. And uh, let's assume that's actually the same target CPA, but in different currencies given a certain exchange rate. So what we can do now is we can, uh, because we have this uh, account ID, which is matching here, we can now say loop through each ad set. So in this case, four ad sets loop through each ad set, calculate the metrics that you need to do, calculate the target CPA, and then look up the target value dynamically based on our second set of data and compare the performance, again, not to some value that we enter inside of the rule, but dynamically based on the account that we have here. And so this is a very simple example. We have four ad sets and two ad accounts. Uh, so it's quite simple. Uh, but imagine this, you know, you, you had this for um, different countries, different product categories, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you know that you have, you essentially always want to manage based on CPA, but you have maybe 20, 30, 40 different segments that all have different target CPAs because maybe they're strategically, one country is more strategic, strategically important than the other. Maybe there is a certain product category that has higher cost, cost of goods sold and your margin is a little bit lower. So you actually need to have a you know, slightly lower target CPA. Whatever, whatever your reasons and whatever the, the use case, um, this is how you're able to actually apply just one rule. For example, if actual CPA of the last seven days is 10% higher than the target CPA, then trigger a bid decrease or a budget decrease, et cetera, et cetera. And talking about triggering a bid or decrease, um, let's go into action. So on the kitchen side, once again, we've built for functionality and the platform is very programmable. So just treat these as examples of things that can be done. So uh, the simple ones are notifications, Slack, email. Uh, and again, uh, usually there are deep links into the platform. So when you get a Slack notification, you would with one click end up in the uh, ad platform uh, with the desired, uh, sorry, with the affected campaign ads that ad uh, activated or sorry, selected. So of course we can pause and activate, we can increase and decrease bits and budgets, we can do this with relative and absolute changes, we can uh, include ceilings of floors. Um, so if we want, don't want to go above uh, or below uh, certain thresholds, then of course that's something that we can do. And 
we can duplicate ad objects. And what are typical use cases? Um, you may have seen duplicating ads inside of an ad set, which is, uh, in our opinion, a kind of an old, uh, outdated strategy uh, that used to make sense when the algorithm wasn't as smart. Nowadays, doesn't usually have an effect. But what we do see a lot is um, a lot of people run separate creative testing campaigns and want to move ads from testing to scaling. Uh, sometimes you may be testing a set of ads in a specific country or target audience and then you want to duplicate the entire ad set and roll those assets out. Um, maybe sometimes you want to make changes on the fly to some attributes. So for example, if you run a campaign in the German market and then you want to roll it out into Austria or Switzerland, uh, maybe the asset stays the same, still German speaking, but you would want to uh, change the domain endings because your website might be localized uh, you know, the currency, of course, with Swiss francs would be different. Um, well, you could come up with anything that you want. And then, of course, the most exciting part, cross account and cross platform changes. Uh, so, for example, maybe you run different accounts in different time zones uh, if it's the same brand and you want to actually duplicate something from one account to another. And that's something that's supported. Or you want to even roll out a high performing um, Instagram story creative and move that over to TikTok because Maybe you like Instagram stories for creative testing better, uh, but as soon as something works there, you want to actually roll it out. Uh, so those are the types of actions that we can do. But again, it is programmable. So if you want to join any of these actions, if you want to send a Slack message and then pause and then do something else, all of those things are totally possible. Uh, at the end of the day, the platform is programmable. And I would say, maybe I'll leave that as a bit of a disclaimer at the end. Uh, the Kitchen.io platform is totally optimized for functionality. Um, it is a little bit more technical. So the UI and the interface will not be as straightforward as a reveal bot or as a Facebook ad rules. But to be fair, Facebook ad rules are not exactly great. The user experience is not great. Um, but the, the learning curve is a little bit steeper. Uh, but what uh, what you'll get out of it is pretty much anything that you can dream up. Um, so that's, uh, for us, at least the really exciting part. And uh, yeah, we hope that's something that you find interesting too.